It is oil cooler time. We have a pretty sick um, oil cooler from what I can tell. We got our factory brackets powder coated and that'll be going on first. We got the brackets to the oil cooler uh, Cerakoted in our burnt bronze we've been doing on all of our bracketry suspension components other little accent pieces as well and then this guy in here get it unwrapped here it's got something in it what is, oh it's probably the lines yeah there are the lines here Whoopsies. is the oil cooler itself very nice that right there and then what went flying everywhere is fittings etc etc now i'm going to butcher this name but it is a Cetrab Susa, and this thing apparently, the lines and stuff like that are their pro fittings and everything, and so you don't need any kind of like thread sealant and all that kind of stuff. They just have O-rings, and uh, that is uh, pretty cool. And I also took all of the hardware that they sent with their kit and measured it and all that stuff, and we got full titanium stuff for all of that. So. We'll get it a little bit organized as to where it's all going, and then we can begin putting this thing onto the car. Alrighty, first things first, we gotta mount the brackets to the oil cooler. Um, our freshly powder coated bracket will go right here, and then the other one mounts kind of this way. We have some brand new titanium hardware for that in our uh, custom blurple color, so that will be super nice to have right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these. Um, I ordered bolts. Uh, lock washers and washers to go on this to kind of match the uh, OEM setup and I'm doing just a dab of anti-seize to Just kind of help protect the threads from galling and stuff like that not really worried about like seizing up and whatnot but um, just enough to have some lubrication on the way in so um, Let's get this right about here and we'll install and you go right about here. I'll have to look up um, torque specs later to get this thing locked down to where it's supposed to be, but uh, next we have this bracket, which I have a reference image that I took a long time ago of how it went. So this one goes right about here. Alrighty, got those things mounted on there, looking good. Uh, let me go grab the oil cooler itself and then we'll put together those brackets and get it mounted up onto here. Before we go to mount this thing onto the car, we gotta figure out these brackets here because they don't come with any kind of instruction, so you just kinda gotta go with it. But I did search some things online and I found a like a tutorial page from QL Motorsports, so I'm gonna follow the way they did their brackets. So theirs is laying like this, so I'm gonna put mine like that. Had them reversed. This one goes here. Very nice. And then it's really, um, it's pretty straightforward once you see it and you know what you're looking for. It's like, of course the bracket goes that way. And then we got this one that goes <clears throat> right about here. So I'm going to go through, take all my titanium hardware, and we will mount these to the oil cooler, and then we can move on to the car. All right, let's uh, get this thing mount it up here. Just want to go ahead and dump out all this titanium and uh, just put it all together here with the washers and whatnot. Ooh. I don't want to put these on there very tight because I have a feeling that whenever I go to put the lines and stuff on, um, I might have to take it off to do that. Uh, but I do want it mounted up here so I can see where the lines need to go and all that stuff. So. We're going to lightly mount this right now. Um, we'll put one down here on the bottom. That way we have like a diagonal support system here. Now, let me get these other bolts on here and we'll figure out how we're going to run these lines. All right, so I had to take this thing back off and I just worked from the inside out because I couldn't get these things to like line up properly and it was kind of like wobbling all over the place and so I just decided to start from scratch. And so I uh, took it off and then mounted it up here, down there, and then up here. We took this whole arm off and did it all together. 
And so that was much easier. And so, um, yeah, got everything mounted up there now. And I think whenever we go to do these lines, we'll just remove it from like here and here. Because <laughs> this was a little bit of a pain to get it lined up and stuff. So rather than doing that all over again, we'll just take off the main mounts and uh, go from there if we have to. Okay, next, to figure out where all these ends and stuff go, I'm gonna reference this little document page here again. It looks like this 360 fitting goes on the top and it runs straight into a straight and fitting. Based off of going to the oil filter housing, these two black uh, orb fittings that go top and bottom of that. Then we have a 90 and then the other 90. The 45 goes at the bottom of the oil cooler and this piece right here just threads straight into the oil cooler itself. And so, cool. Well, let's go see if we can pop these fittings on while it's on the car, and then we can uh, move on from there. I'm not sure if I said it earlier or not, but uh, they do say right here to use uh, their assembly lubricant or equivalent. And so we do have some uh, red line assembly lube here. We'll put that on the fittings. That is to, uh, to reduce galling and stuff like that on the threads of these things. And they also say, not on the box here, but what I found on their website, um, to not use any thread sealant on any of this stuff. Uh, the orb fittings don't need it and the um, other fittings have like o-rings on them and so that's how they seal and so um, it's a little bit different than what I thought I was gonna have to do but that's fine we can go ahead and do that so um, yeah here we go. Uh, you know what it actually says in this uh, in this write-up here that they took the thing back off of the car to tighten those fittings so um, let's go remove it we'll bring it up here let's lay this thing down <laughs> And we will get this stuff locked onto here. Now, they have these little block off ports. So we'll loosen that. That one is on there. There we go. They say you might have to, uh, on their website, you might have to disassemble uh, this piece to put it on. So I'm gonna do that so we don't mess anything up. And then we can just put on this piece right to the uh, oil cooler itself. It also says to use a, a backup wrench to make sure you're not putting any kind of like stress on the oil cooler. So we'll get a different wrench. We'll hold on to the oil cooler itself because it has some like, let me show you here real quick. It has some little fittings like this. So we'll hold this piece to like brace ourselves to tighten it down. Um, and we should be good to go with that. Um, it did say on there that the recommended torque setting is 29 and a half foot-pounds or 40 Newton meters So we'll do that and um, yeah, let me go grab myself a paper towel because I didn't do that <laughs> I ought to have my paper towel roll on this side, you know where the workbench is, but That's not how we're laid out here <laughs> All right, let me grab my wrench and my torque wrench. Um, I hope I have a wrench big enough I definitely don't have a socket bigger than that. What are you, inch and a half? Ooh, look at that, it works. I need some big sockets, it would seem. Um, wrenches, we can grab our masking taped wrench and hope that we can get it big enough. And we cannot. We're gonna have to use the, use the big boy and hope we don't scratch anything. I don't even know that with this wrench on it, if I can get the socket down on it. It's a thick ass wrench. Um, let me see here, let me see here. <laughs> Not even close. Um, well, do I run to the store and attempt to get a thin wrench that's big enough for that? Um, let me ponder. Alrighty, so I did go to the store. I got a smaller, like, it's not very thick, of a adjustable wrench and that will fit directly onto there and I should be able to get the socket onto there to tighten that fitting and I also uh, didn't really film it but I'll show the next one went ahead and put this line together and put it on the bottom part there these lines are super easy to put together even though they're cut already they uh, yeah they just go right into the fittings you tighten them down um, I put my tape on the end here to make sure that the the uh, fitting that goes onto the hose didn't back off as I was pushing in the fitting that goes right here. If you've never put together an and fitting before, which I'm assuming most of you have, um, they come apart like this in a minute whenever it's done. Holy crap. Um, the hose goes in right here, and then you put it back into this. This part goes into the hose, 
and when you fit it on there, it puts the hose onto the fitting and you're all good to go. So um, that's what we were doing there. I also bought a 27 millimeter socket so we can get that thing on there as well with my wrench. Oh, that feels like a lot, but that's what it says on the box. So that's what we're gonna be doing. There it is, Whew. Okay, it clicked, we're good to go. Let's move on. What I've learned, or what I have seen with these things, is you're supposed to go counterclockwise. I have the hiccups. Counterclockwise, I don't know if it matters on this one or not, but it goes right in. And then, just push down. It's all the way up against the end in there. Not sure if you can see that or not with my ass lighting in the garage, but that's as far as it'll go. Um, I'm gonna blow this out with air, just to make sure one more time that it's clean inside of there. Let's apply some tape just to make sure that our little fitting doesn't back off when we're pushing on the other fitting. I put a little dab of silicone spray on this thing so it slides in a little bit smoother. And we just put it in right like that and begin threading. It generally would be easier with a vise, but I don't have one that is like table mounted. So I have to do it this way, which that's whatever. Okay, both ends of the line are complete. So we're gonna turn this guy up. We will put our little fitting on right here. And we should be golden to go put this thing on the car. Now, you don't necessarily have to have these and wrenches, but I will say they do come in handy and they do not scratch up these and fittings as bad, I believe, as you normally would with like a regular wrench. That's why I have these um, covered in masking tape trying to like reduce the scratching uh, before I got these, these little and wrenches. But um, either way, as long as you have something to hold it steady, you should be solid. You got just barely enough room. I might need to like bend this bracket out a little bit. I might even be able to adjust that myself with these guys. Um, but nevertheless, let's, um, let's finish getting this ran here. So this guy runs to the back back here and then this guy will run to right here. And that's easy peasy. Let me go over and get the fittings and we'll put them into the oil filter housing. I'll thread that one in. Right there. I'm going to put these on based how they say to, but we'll keep an eye on it as we're first running the car. These guys have like a rubberized like seal inside of there that's supposed to seal everything. So we're gonna give it a shot this way. Okay, that's all I'm going with that. And uh, it did say, you know, during the first startups and all that kind of stuff, just watch yourself with your leakage. And um, if it begins to leak, you need to tighten it a little bit more. Okay, that's as tight as I want to go. All right, this fitting goes right here. We'll snug all these down later. Um, I gotta go through the whole car, like I've said before, and uh, make sure everything is all tight and all that stuff. So I know my head's in the way there, I apologize. There we go. All right, that looks awesome. Um, I thought I would have to snug these together somehow, but I really don't know how I would do that. Maybe here? to have some kind of a line separator maybe to put right there to kind of hold them in place, but we'll figure it out later. That's probably enough gap to have one of those uh, line separators right there to kind of just hold everything in place and all that. So um, yeah, there it is. Now, moving on from this, I do, while I'm here, I might as well put on a new oil filter. We're also gonna pop in our Project Kicks um, magnetic drain plug. We'll get this one out of here, uh, the oil pan, and we'll put this one on there and uh, that'll be nice to have as we're doing this first start and first runs and all that stuff. There we are, that looks beautiful. Let's go ahead and uh, change this plug out. All right, hope I grabbed the right size. <laughs> I did. Holy shit, that thing was on there. And that magnet is strong too. Look at that. <laughs> Get this thing, woo. 
<laughs> that thing is so strong. Alrighty, there that is. Um, I will tighten that down to spec at a later time. Once we go through and check all of our blue marks from our paint pen, to make sure everything is locked down. I am super pleased with how well all this went together. Everything looks really awesome together. This was a super easy install. Actually, the lines were very easy to put together. All this stuff, this was a little bit tricky up into here, but um, other than that, this was pretty simple. I don't know how I thought I was gonna get wrenches and all that stuff back into there to get this thing on while it was on the car. Uh, obviously, I wasn't thinking very clearly. <laughs> I was able to tweak this bracket right here a little bit, and uh, we got some space back there now. You can see some daylight coming through, um, plenty of space back there, and to that I say, boom. Oil cooler is installed. One more thing off of the list. With all of that being done and said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this one off here. I am super happy to get that oil cooler on there. Everything looks great. Next up really is just the radiator. AC condenser. I might work on that next, get that stuff out of the way, knocked out, and uh, get some uh, radiator hoses and all that stuff ran in there so I can see how everything's going to look put together and done. Um, and then we can move on to the transfer case, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, moving right along. We're getting oh so close. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it very much. As always, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you next time. Bye!